welcome to our somewhat delayed next session, whatever number it is, of our ongoing campaign for Leagues of Adventure by Triple Ace Games called The Sky is No Limit. Now this session took place two weeks ago. And it's only appearing on this channel now, because remember, they're broadcast live on Triple S Games' Facebook page. But the contest is still active. Contest, you say? What do you mean? Well, after I finish talking here, and we travel back in time two weeks to this session, you will hear Robin Elliott of Triple S Games and myself talking about a contest. And that contest simply requires you to send an email to the customer service email of Triple Ace Games. So custserve at triplacegames.com. Send an email there with your answer. Then there will be a drawing the next time we play. All right. Now in the video, you may hear uh, Robin say, uh, the first person to enter. It's the first drawn is what we're talking about. And there's a prize, and the prize is that you will win, free of charge, one of Triple Ace Games PDF offerings of your choice. So in your email to custserve at triplacegames.com, include the PDF from their catalog that you don't have that you would like sent to you for free. The name that we draw in the next session is the one who wins. Simple enough. So let's move on and join our intrepid group of explorers as they experience what it means for the sky to have no limit. Good morning, everyone. It's Dr. Navit here from Triple H Games, and we're back uh, playing our not so weekly game of uh, Leagues of Adventure. Uh, the sky is no limit, and um, yeah, we're, we're back today. And um, we just wanted to uh, first sort of say uh, about we've got a little competition that we're going to run, and I'm just going to hand over to Anthony, who's going to tell you how to enter and uh, what it's all about. So over to you, Anthony. Thank you very much. All right. We had so much fun with our small contest last time in our bi-weekly Sky is No Limit campaign adventure that we're launching another one. Now this one will have a duration of two weeks. You'll have two weeks to enter. So what is the contest? Here it is. It's a skill testing question. It's a participation question kind of thing. We would like you to tell us, but not in the comments, right? Robin will explain in a minute. We want you to tell us in which Triple Ace Games Leagues of Adventure supplement our exploratory group's patron Dr. Challenger appears. So let's repeat that. We're looking for the source book in which Dr. Challenger, the patron of this expedition to the Lost World Plateau, appears. Now, for what you can win and how to apply, I will turn you over to Robin Elliott. Robin. Okay. Um, yeah, so we are asking you for that select piece of information that you may have to go and do a little bit of uh, digging for. But um, the way that you can enter, obviously, we don't want you to post anything personal on the forum or on the comments of this video. We need you to email us, and you can email us at custserve at triplacegames.com. Uh, that's actually written in the comments as well so you can find that easily and all you need to do is tell us which supplement uh, challenger appears in first and uh, also i'd like to know which 
free product in PDF form you'd like to receive uh, from us via drive through rpg.com so we obviously we will have your email address because you've emailed us so we can send it to you and um, yeah uh, looking forward to seeing who finds that piece of information first uh, just to say the competition is not open to anybody here <laughs> on the stream <laughs> yeah especially you Anthony uh, uh, it's not open to Wiggy either if you're watching Wiggy you're not allowed to answer either <laughs> so uh, yeah thank you uh, to Anthony for suggesting that idea fantastic and um, we're going to hand over to uh, Ivan who's playing Lawrence Garibaldi in the game and he's going to give us a brief overview of the last session which I've got no memory of so this is going to be <laughs> very useful for the for the next session so uh, over to you Ivan no pressure no pressure thank you thank you so much there uh, and I, I, I recommend the PDF version of the uh, AAA's games dice my, my favorites. <laughs> there is no PDF version of dice don't let this man damn <laughs> all right anyhow so yes, no pressure whatsoever. So I actually watched mostly or listened to most episode this morning when I got up at an ungodly hour. And so, as far as my recollection and and and, and the episode has got me. Um, so what's happened, Ivan? What's actually happened is the uh, the epiphany was kind of under siege or under occupation uh, by the forces from the dirigible. So poor Oscar Weingold and a, a lot of our um, retinue. We're sort of being held prisoner at this point, and they're, they're telling poor Oscar that he has to go with them. They're taking everybody else. They're trying to pack everything up. Um, there's something obviously wrong with the dirigible, what's wrong with the engines. Um, and so they're making a little airstrip and everything for, for their, their uh, aquatic plane to probably, probably land you know, in the direction of the river, all this sort of stuff. In the meantime, um, you know, George Mallory and Tenvir Singh, they're, they're prisoners back at the, at the, at the um, at the base camp. I think they're actually in the dirigible. I forget exactly which device. They're, flew they're over. in the dirigible. Yeah. They're in the dirigible. I forget which device is actually over by the by the epiphany. Is it just a plane, or is it just a, a uh, just uh, that's actually just a bunch of people at this point? Not the dirigible itself. Okay, good, good. Okay, <laughs> okay. Never mind. Yeah, now now it's all coming together. So Mallory and Tanvir Singh, <laughs> they can see something's wrong with the engine on the dirigible. Yeah, it's early in the morning, kids. All right, <laughs> for me. And in the meantime. In the meantime, you know, there's a, there's a retinue of people over there getting poor Oscar Weingold and everybody else, you know, get ready to, to march through the jungle. They're, they're going to tie the people together to have them all, uh, all go that way. Um, Mallory and uh, Tanver Singh have been kind of, uh, have, have talked to Rochefort, who's let them know that, uh, you know, it would be, he preferred that they not try to escape. Mallory said, well, it's really my duty to escape. He said, he's uh, put a couple of strap young, strapping young lads at the door. They're very cordial. They're very nice. It's obvious that this dirigible would not withstand an attack from the, the giant pterodactyl, uh, but he's asked them and, and got, a, got a promise from Mallory to help it to defend the ship rather than try to flee should something go amiss. Um, so we have that going on. In the meantime, uh, I, Lawrence Garibaldi, along with, uh, along with several, uh, several people, including uh, Edmund Burke, I think uh, the esteemable Phillips, uh, Procter & Gamble, good group of people, we are all been trudging through the jungle to get back to the to the epiphany because we, we know something's up. We know that the uh, originals passed by. We know it's it's a race. The game is on. This is the this is a great game. And we get to the clearing, we see, oh man, there's something wrong. Now, Weingold has built the skiffs, the flying skiffs are there already. He's built the tank, which makes the water that tastes like crap, but apparently it's potable. <laughs> and uh, at this point, we we need to distract a distraction. We need to have something to happen. A couple of guards have come in to to make around maybe maybe they got suspicious i forget what actually happened we managed to accost them knock them down we have private potter who won't give us anything but his name is you know his rank and his serial number no matter what we say he's that private potter sir so we take the clothes off these men including one that's kind of blood spattered and i decide i'm going to create a distraction try to get the rest of them here i go out lawrence garabelli goes out and he and he says i say there's a trouble and apparently the ruse does not work they recognize that this is not one of their friends and oscar wangel just shouts out hey Lawrence, what's wrong? Is you know what, what's going on? And the only thing you know Lawrence can think of to say is, "Is that you, Oscar?" So the jig is up. Um, Phillips starts shouting to make it sound as if there's an entire regiment, as if as if you know, um, Arm Brewster Cardenza has brought his men to bear. Uh, there's a great scene where Edmund Burke, played by. 
played by the esteemable Robert Ellen, shoots three hats off these, three pistol helmets off these men at once. <laughs> yeah. There's cacophony. And, and, and so in all the confusion, Oscar and, and um, let's see, who else? Uh, Percy and uh, I believe her name is Ann. Dan Smith. Dan Smith, the photographer. They're all running for the skiffs. Garibaldi runs for one of the skiffs. Garibaldi run, you know, jumps into one of the skiffs. He sees it's a bit of a hack job, but it looks like it should work as far as the, the chemistry part. And the only problem is he really has no real appreciable skill in flying anything. And Oscar's shouting instructions to him, you know, turn this, you know, turn this, pull that. And both of them fly up in the air because, of course, the, the paint you know, has a minimum clearance distance once you turn it on. And at this point, it seems like there's a bunch of, like, riders with pterodactyls, uh, with smaller pterodactyls, thank goodness, all flying to us at once. So it's kind of like, the, you know, everything's happening all at once. And that's where we are. And probably the safest place to be right now is at another dirigible, because nothing's happening there right now. So George Mallory and Zach Oh, Mercedes. that's not quite No, so. I, I seem to uh, remember but there, but there was, but looking oh, out was, the window and seeing oh, the greenest the pterodactyls. Glow. Yeah. Oh, no, that's there right. The pterodactyls, a... pterodactyls everywhere. Never mind. Yeah. <laughs> greenest glow and another squad of pterodactyls diving out of the sky. Uh, so no place is safe and everything's louder than everything else. That's right. Nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, that was probably the best, best recap you ever heard in your whole life. <laughs> Uh, I think I have heard nine or ten excellent course. recaps <laughs> <laughs> over the course of this cafe. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. Okay, so gentlemen, we have the skiffs rocketing up into uh, the air over the turf, and we have, you know, looking out the small porthole of the basically balsa wood and, and canvas dirigible. We have pterodactyl riders, uh, you know, that the pterodactyls are pulling in their wings tight and just dropping down like javelins from the sky. And, uh, but George Mallory can see that, that pulsing green glow in the, the distance. And I'd like to start with uh, Mallory's survival. Okay. Have a, an opportunity using the information from the map that he gleaned in the last episode to try and figure out based on his awareness of the lay of the land, the probable distance. I mean, he can't triangular in it, triangulate or anything, but the probable distance between where you are and where that glow is coming from. Uh, so do I get any helping dice from that previous knowledge or just a plan? Yes, indeed you do. Model? You get two dice for that. All right, so it's two for the helping dice from the knowledge, and it's six from my uh, rating in survival. So and here we go. And the difficulty is two. Oh, well, that Ooh. is a whopping three, six successes on eight dice. Nice. Nice. Six successes, so four, four successes over the difficulty. Yes, sir. Right on. Excellent. So... Pinpointed. <laughs> Pretty much, right? I mean, there's there, there's room for human error. But Mallory has a good idea uh, from his recollection of the map, uh, the, the distance he's traveled this far from the Epiphany, the sighting he made at the Epiphany, that sort of stuff. He has a, a good idea. He could find it navigating without it. Or, you know, at least be close enough to, to walk around and... and uh, and feel fairly confident. So that, so he nailed it. Excellent, excellent. All right, now of course, all around the, the stateroom that you're in, you can see nothing about the, the state of, of, uh, of the crew of the, of the Aries. You can just see people scrambling, you know, the ground crew, right? Throwing off lines and uh, you can see troopers going behind cover and, and you know, getting their weapons ready. And uh, so the, the ship is obviously responding to the attack and you can hear the sound of shouting. And because the walls are so thin, you can, you can clearly make out that it's orders, you know, it's, it's different uh, military commanders mm -hmm. You're too far away from, from the, uh, from the bridge to hear Cartwright's orders. But, you know, he, he of course must be orchestrating something. And then from, 
above comes the deafening roar of the machine gun mm. All right. as, the, as they open up. Okay, so do I get a sense of what the orders are? Just, you know, get ready, get on deck and attack, repel borders or something? Is that a sense of it's, what? It's like that. The, the dirigible is yeah. so large, right? Yeah, yeah. That you can assume, possibly, that the pterodactyls will will drop down upon it and, you know, to, to rip the gas bag or to pick people out of the, the, the weapons cupolas or, or whatnot. It's hard, it's hard to say. And are, are the machine guns up top or down top here okay and, so and down and so beneath but the ones so, that are beneath can't be angled up yeah makes sense yeah. they'll makes come sense. into play later hmm. yeah. <laughs> no, and but the door opens yeah, yeah. Uh, and anybody? one of the stewards is there saying we could use your guns sir right away Ooh. yes uh, get your guns stan veer uh let's go um but sir when I pick up, pick up, <laughs> take my knives, put them. Uh. <laughs> well, the, we got a couple of guns, right? So, <laughs> so I'll grab my nice. elephant gun and my <laughs> and my uh, uh, pistol, and uh, and as we're exiting, I'll ask the crewmen, you know, where is where's Rochefort? Is he up top? Is he on deck? He's up top, sir. Well, let's uh, uh, lead us to him. We'll help defend and we'll discuss strategy. Yes, sir. So, you know, you're going up this spiral wrought iron staircase. You have to go down the, the narrow corridor first and up, up the spiral staircase. Tanvir looks very uncomfortable. And just, uh, you know, she's afraid of staircases. No, no, of course not. <laughs> just rolling, rolling my eyes, but. I'm used to this at this point. The orange always gets a little bit, gets a little, um, well, guns. <laughs> now, back at the Epiphany, the same sort of situation is happening. The, the pterodactyls are, are folding their wings and they're just, they're dive bombing. And the troops are already demoralized, right? They, they've already felt that they were being attacked, right? You know, and people were blowing their hats off. People have, have hit the dirt. And so even though the corporal is shouting, you know, uh, to try to organize the troops, they're not responding with the sort of efficiency that, that they previously have uh, demonstrated. Right? And some of them are crawling for safety and, so it's Edmund's Bur Edmund Burke's crew of, of uh, soldiers rescued from uh, Lieutenant Credenza that are putting on a better showing, you know, forming up into a squad behind cover and you know, trying to track the, uh, the pterodactyls as they fall, although they're falling so very fast. And at the last minute, the pterodactyls flare their wings to go into a sharp arc and their long sharp beak works exactly like a javelin nice. and uh, some of the red coated uh, royal geographic society soldiers who are you know running for the for the trees are just speared through the back you know just explode in a mess and the rider uses that moment of of momentum stopping to hurl their own spears or javelins with extra force with with killing force and so in the in the blink of an eye right four of the of the the capturing soldiers are down with blood soaking into their red uniforms right motionless and that's when uh, your soldiers begin to open fire right with the the skiffs hovering, you know, five meters off the turf. So that the, the pterodactyls have blasted past you and, and attacked. But some, the second wave, are coming down toward the skiffs. You know, you can see the shadow spreading and growing larger across the floorboards, uh, lit by the green glow of the chemical batteries. Okay. Oscar, we've, we've got to pick up Burke and the others and get the heck out of here. How do you, how does, what do I do? 
I think I, I was swinging around to pick Burke up in the last session. So, okay. yeah. I what do I do? You wanted to pick Burke up, yeah. <laughs> and you're <laughs> shouting orders to the completely unable to pilot Lawrence I, Garibaldi. I'll be shouting like, you know, press that button, pull that lever, head right. ah, that's it. So that... That gives Oscar a distraction penalty of two dice, and it grants two dice to Lawrence Garibaldi. For a total of two dice. It, is Lawrence completely alone in the skiff? Or yeah, no, nobody alone. was getting in the, I thought nobody was getting in the skiff. Oh, he is alone. That's right. And that's right. Everybody and Percy else. are in <laughs> with Oscar. Same direction. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Nobody was right. getting And okay, because I'm completely, because it's specialized skill, I really can't add anything to it. So these are just my two dice, right? That That's is correct, great. sir. Okay, excellent. I mean, you could use style if you had. I I, I I used them before. It's fine. Yeah, it's, it's unlikely that your game master is ever going to give you anything. <laughs> okay. Cruel. That's I, what I heard. Right. Go yeah. My my intention is simply not. I'm not trying to pick anybody up. I'm trying to not get speared. I'm trying to just make a okay. safe fly for the you know the tree line. Something to make it a little bit. Well, no, that's a bad idea too. Yeah, no. Well, I'm going to kind of follow. I, I got to be with an earshot of wine gold, so of course I'm going to the tree line. I've got to, you know. Just, so you're, yeah. you're trying to follow him. All right. Yeah, just follow so we'll, him. But we'll I'm, come back to Lawrence and his two dice yeah. when he needs to defend. Yeah. Okay. Well. That'll work. <laughs> Oscar. Yeah. All right. So you uh, really can't get any lower. No, because of the paint. Although you could try to turn off the flow and then turn it back on before you hit the ground, or something like that, if you if you were feeling risky. Hell yeah! I mean, that's that's the genre. <laughs> <laughs> that's well, it. Give it a try. Yeah, I think I think well to be to give um, to to give Burke any chance of getting in. And any of his men that are left, sure. I've got to get lower. I'm guessing, yeah. yeah, you know, ideally, I'd just sort of scrape the ground enough that they could just fling themselves in. That sounds ideal. Yeah, yeah let's let's try that. Eloy, could you take <laughs> Phillips again? Uh, of course. Where is Phillips and where is Gamble? Are my two questions. Is Phillips on the ground and is? Yeah, Proctor oh. and Gamble are the behind. The row of uh, soldiers with Burke, right, and okay, Burke so and Phillips had formed up with the with the squad. So. Okay, so so Gamble and uh, and Phillips are down in the ground. There, nobody's on the skiff. Right. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, mm. Right. So we'll begin with the with the attempted dive bomb. <laughs> this is a. I think this is crashing with style. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm torn between piloting and engineering, and I need to assign you a difficulty of two with your two. Well, how about is it is it is 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 it going to be two roles? Is it a role to do the engineering side of it and a role to pilot? it? No, no, just one roll. Okay. Just one ping, Vasily. <laughs> one ping only. One ping only. Yeah. Let's okay. go with engineering. Well, that's 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 better for me. Oh, sorry. I tried to choose the lower pool. Nah. With my cruelty. So it's eight mm -hmm. dice, but minus two for the distraction. So six dice, and with a two for the difficulty. A two different difficulty. Okay, yeah. I'm on six dice. Yeah. So six dice, ignoring the first two successes. Okay, well, in which case, um, two successes clear. I've got four successes in total. All oh, right. So he succeeds, gentlemen. Athletics will have Phillips be representative of of the of the common soldiers. Uh, uh, sure. Okay. Uh, okay. So he has an athletics of four. Yes. There we go. And that is two successes. Right on. So Phillips and his cohorts, his his uh, his associates, his fellow soldiers, 
under arm booster credenza, you know, are, are clinging and climbing on and helping each other up as, uh, as, as the skiff goes to pick them up. But this gives the pterodactyls, the second wave of pterodactyls, the other four, their opportunity to attack the skiffs. Okay, so we'll begin with Lawrence uh, Garibaldi alone in his boat with his two die defense. We're frantically trying to remember which things he told me to push and pull and, <laughs> and everything, and then seeing the, you know, diving pterodactyls. And so it's as good as a guess. Woo! Two Woo. successes. <laughs> nice. So the the pterodactyl itself slams into the front end of the skiff, right? Shat, you know, shattering some some seats, and it's 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 thrown off balance and it's falling against the gunwale, so the so the the boat is is, is twisting, but the rider is facing the wrong way. Right? So he can't just cast the spear uh, into you, and he's he's turning around to look at you, and the and the pterodactyl's trying to to right itself, and its claws are just carving huge gouges. But you're heading right for Oscar, as as Oscar's coming back up. All right, and we need defense from Oscar. This is piloting. Right. Five dice. Yeah. And here's how it's going to go. The first the first attack is Lawrence. The second attack is the pterodactyl, which will give you a, a two die penalty because there's multiple attacks. Sorry, mate. Okay. So so does that mean that I uh, I'm only rolling three dice now? So oh, you're going to roll. Stack, roll yes, your first stack you're going to you're going to roll all your piloting dice. Okay. And the second time you're going to roll two less. Okay. So first roll, three successes. Excellent. So, how do you avoid the on-rushing Garibaldi with his pterodactyl passenger? Sorry. Um. So. Uh, so he's, I'm kind of coming up from the ground, and he's coming directly for me. So right, directly for you. Yeah, I, I will, uh, I'll, gen, I'll, I'll take a, a steep turn to the right and just kind of, oh my god, so yeah, just hopefully <laughs> give him the space he needs to kind of, uh, possibly just skim the edge of the, the skiff against me. Rather than hitting it, fake. yeah. Rather than hitting it on, yeah. Maybe I can just kind of give it enough space that he can slide past. Almost. Cool. And that's going to send you, of course, into the tree line where you're going to have to avoid some some trees in a moment. Of now, course. Phillips, there you are. You were first in the boat. You get a very, very clear and close look at Garibaldi as he's scraping <laughs> down the paint of the skiff. He's in there alone with a pterodactyl and a pterodactyl rider with a spear and claws. And... I mean, this is, is that a, okay? This, this is a moment of, of heroism here. Coming this up. is the moment where I <laughs> jumps from his skiff to, to Garibaldi's yes! skiff because he's in trouble. So I got my rifle in one hand, so I'm going to vault over the, uh, over the side of my skiff oh, and crazy. land in in nice. Garibaldi's. I mean, that's that's athletics. Fine. We'll give you an extra die for yes. the for the, the rifle as your as your pole vaulting tool. We're gonna give two style points to, yes. to Garibaldi for being a nut. And we're gonna give two to Oscar Weingold uh, for being prepared. Nice. Epic. It's epic. Nice. Those are three successes on five dice. Excellent. And Phillips hearing the adulation of his core, you know, uh, also gains a point of style. Right. You know, they're cheering like, you know, go get him, Phillips, and all this stuff. All right. So, Garibaldi, you are no longer alone. All right. Now, we will allow Phillips to decide, okay, 
Is he in the bow with the pterodactyl or is he amidships between the pterodactyl and the juicy Garibaldi? <laughs> juicy. Mm. So I'm either in the bow with the pterodactyl or in between the pterodactyl. Well, the, in between is better, right? Yes. <clears throat> so yes, it gives it multiple targets instead of yeah. Yeah, and, and it also it also allows him to fire at least a little bit more clear right, right. without, without hitting anybody. Without that that point yeah. blank point blank yeah. penalty. Yeah. <laughs> Excellent. So we'll continue on with that action. Could I have initiative, please, for Phillips and Garibaldi? Everything is four with Phillips, right? So pretty much. Except for his perception, which is six, and yeah. his rifle, which is six. Oh, nice. Let me get a uh, one. Boom, boom, boom. Two oh, place games, dice yes. holding their own there. Available on PDF. <laughs> No, no, it's not fair. Some assembly may be required. <laughs> Three. Okay, Garibaldi has four. The pterodactyl has four. Okay. So it's uh, Lawrence Garibaldi. What is your dexterity, please, sir? It is a two. Ah, so pterodactyl, Lawrence. Phillips. It makes sense because Phillips is like getting up and readying the rifle, right? So it's it makes perfect sense that yeah. he goes last. Makes yeah. perfect sense. The dice know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the, the pterodactyl turns around and it's it's human sized, right? and as it's it's uncomfortably in the boat, you know, it's, you see its its rear claws digging into the wood, and it has the ability to shoot out. It's, it's pointed bill like a spear, as you've seen. But its eyes, like a hunter, have been focused on, on Garibaldi. Right? There's something, something about his colorful red Royal Geographic Society uniform, right? Rather than the kind of uh, more or you know, less ostentatious uniform of, of Phillips, who's been slogging through the, the jungle for days, right? So it focuses on Garibaldi and launches its attack. Splendid. That's splendid. Would you like to be speared? You could just stand there and take it. That would be thrilling. Oh, no. No, no, no. I'm going I'm I'm to defend. Okay. My good man. In what way? I'm defend against this. Leap out of the boat. Oh, good God. No, no, no. Of course not. <laughs> That'd um, be a well, fine no, thank you to, to Phillips. dive out of the way of its... Um, I'm just going to lean out of the way of this bill if it's going right towards me. I mean, I don't want to leave the controls behind exactly, but you know, I'm just going to okay. Okay. dodge to the right. <laughs> now, of course, you're standing in dodge front of all right. that fragile all right. equipment. Oh, yes. I am. I'm going to try, try to parry his bill as I, as that, I dodge to the right. So is, that, actually... <laughs> is that fragile bill-proof equipment? Or... <laughs> No, it's fragile I, I, because I somebody it. else oh, put it together that didn't yeah. really put it together in really yeah. in dirty containers. You know, in somebody city. who was rushed. You know, dinosaur yeah. dinosaur proofing the equipment is really Oscar's job. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, don't, I really don't remember that in the uh, parameters. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, my, uh, yeah. So that's how defense. I'm going to The X plus body equals defense. Yes, it does. All right, good. <laughs> one, one success. Yes. Insufficient. Oh dear. Right. I'm aware of that, sir. Okay. Tell him what he's won, Jim. He has won three <laughs> lethal wounds. Oh. Excellent. All right, good. Good. <laughs> Bring you down negative one again. I was actually just, I was, I was wrong. I was just when he was like a positive. <laughs> I, was yeah, I was at two. <laughs> I, you know, I, I have four lethal wounds, but now I have seven lethal wounds. Okay, plus plus three health. But I was actually at a two. So now I'm at so now I'm at a negative one health. Okay, that's okay. It's only one die penalty. He's not back in a beat. The human you also the human pin you also need to make a resilience check versus the the pain. Oh, that's we'll right. Yeah, wake, right. We'll come back to that next time. All right. 
back to the dirigible. The Aries. Aries. The Aries. Yeah, Aries. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. So the steward, the big muscular steward, you know, throws open the, the hatch and he's first up on the roof. And of course, as soon as the hatch goes up, the, the volume of, of fire increases. And you can hear, you know, the crack of rifles, but you can also hear the thunderous roar of the, the Gatling machine gun. You get a, a look at it, right? It's being cranked around in a circle by, by one attendant. There's a belt feeder by the other attendant and this, these, the barrels are just rotating. Oh, bang, 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 bang. And you've seen this thing blow through trees, right? And just, and create this, this huge clearing. You know that it's an incredibly powerful weapon. Not the least reason because the shells explode. Ooh. Mm -hmm. However, it's geared for accuracy. It's meant for shooting down large aerial vessels. It simply cannot keep up with the speed of the, of the pterodactyls. If maybe there were a cloud of them, they would have some, some luck, but they, they, they're bursting like a starburst, you know? Mm -hmm. And so they, you know, they're, they just simply can't lead the target. They can't, uh, they can't track the target, and they're just expending shells all over the place. And they are keeping good fire control so as not to imperil their own troops on the ground, which limits some of their ability to get the pterodactyls at their, their slowest point as they, you know, they finish their dives. So when the pterodactyls are on the, la on the land spearing troops, there's very little that, that uh, this heavy weaponry can do. However, the pterodactyls are not bulletproof yes uh is rochefort here rochefort is here and he is very calmly standing with you know his handgun with his handgun braced exactly like he did when when he shot the rest of you and he is calmly shooting pterodactyls out of the sky boom Right. And then the pterodactyl curls over to, you know, scream toward its, its fall. And you can see the rider waiting for the moment to jump over to the dirigible, which it does. Right. Losing its mount with a no kind of thing. Right. Now I need a perception roll from George and Tanvir. Okay. <laughs> Two and three. Okay, it's, this is enough. The bulk of the attack has has focused on you know raining death down toward the front of of the dirigible. But as you come up out of the circular staircase, both of you catch sight of one slightly larger pterodactyl and like a wingman, right? And they are coming with. I got a net strung between them. The, the, the riders are hanging onto this net. And the pterodactyls are, are laboring in flight. And there is a glowing green object oh. in the net. Gotcha. Um, okay, so I will try to shoot one of the pterodactyls in the hopes that it might drop the net and thus have the thing fall down. Uh, How big is the thing? The thing is roughly the size of of one of these riders' torso. Okay. Mm. Quite big. So it's quite pretty big. big. Yeah. Must weigh several stones. very stone. heavy. You know, the way, it, the way it looks, it's, it's definitely heavier than it... Uh, than its size would suggest. Very dense material. And it's a glowing thing? Yeah, it's not filling the, the sky with radiance, yeah, yeah. but it has but its, its own internal its light. light. I could try to it shoot it that. Reminds but I don't George, know. Yeah. It would remind George of the rod through the large pterodactyl. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah I just, it could probably try and blow it up, but if it's really hard, it's not going to do anything. So I think I'm going to shoot one of the pterodactyls in the hopes that it'll they'll drop the thing because if one wingman goes down, then probably the whole thing collapses to the ground. So I'll try to shoot the pterodactyl. All right. 
Make it happen. Uh, okay, so my skill with the elephant gun is pretty good. Uh, do I have range penalties and stuff like that? No, no, it's it's, uh, uh, yeah. it's one of the great things about the elephant gun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, so I take aim very carefully, and let me count my dice, make sure I have all 11 dice ready to roll. Jealous. <laughs> 11 dice. And it's one, two, three, uh, four dice out of 11. Only Just four, four dice earned their keep? I'm sorry. I didn't mean to expose you to this kind of disappointment. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So the pterodactyl is hit, right? And you can see a spray of blood go, you know, over its shoulder, down its side, possibly, you know, against the thigh of the armored, uh, of the armored rider. And it screams its rage, but it's still, it's still coming still forward. Flapping, so and that's the one shot from the elephant gun. Uh, Tanvir! Get the the flyer on the left, and I'm I'm gonna draw my 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 pistol and continue firing as soon as possible. So I sigh. What do you think about that, Tamir? <laughs> I sigh, and I'm waiting for it to get closer. I take out take out my knife, ready to throw it at the at the uh, pterodactyl if, if they come really close or the rider, because once again George Mallory has forgotten my vow. I forgot your vow. Yes, you're not gonna use any guns. I get it. Yeah, but I, but I'm waiting. You know, if, if I can get to the point where I can, I have a, a reasonable chance to be close enough to you know, try to flip the knife into uh, into the the great bird. But if it's right. way out of range, then I have to think of something else. Okay. Well, I'll yell out to Rochefort. Rochefort, get those cannons on that. That pair of flyers. Don't know if it's going to work. His, but, yeah. his head snaps around, you know, and uh, you, know, you can see like his his eyes zero again, and then he's he's whips around to give orders. He actually gives them in coordinates, right? So the thing had been tracking around, so now they you know, they, they slow to a stop, you know, and they see the guy struggling against the weight of the gun. And he starts cranking around the other way, and it's coming around. <laughs> Mallory can deduce there is no way this gun is going to be able to make it all the way around before these two pterodactyls can deliver its cargo. The question is, can Mallory reload? Uh, are they beyond handgun range? Because I could try. No, no, no. They're coming into handgun range. Okay. So I think I want to shoot them with a handgun then because the elephant gun might not get reloaded in time there's a good possibility that the you can't reload the elephant gun in time so i'm going to try the the handgun then all right then so you know it's, it's almost with agonizing slowness right you've got the elephant gun in hand and that's both hands and then it has to go somewhere and then the the pistol be drawn yeah. and you know, one action, two actions, and then... There's nothing stopping Tanvir reloading the elephant gun. Doesn't have to fire There's it. There's nothing stopping that, yeah. Well, you know, that's another thing. Just to hand him the... Uh, I mean, uh, reload! Uh, yeah. yeah, and then just... Uh, uh, if it, I'm going to dagger my teeth and start reloading the elephant gun, you know, that's high. Cool. So it's, it's being reloaded. That takes... That takes the turn, right? So... You'll be able to fire the pistol as they are nearing the tail of the dirigible. So there is very little time. Very little time. Out on the Amazon River, off to your left, the four winged plane is landing. And another perception check, please, from both of you gentlemen. Three. Three. I'm on the elephant. Anyone? Tanvir's too busy, but <laughs> the sharp eyes of our of our renowned explorer recognize a particular 
posture, a particular lieutenant's uniform in the forward Ooh. pilot's seat as arm Brewster credenza is brought to Captain Cartwright. Although not directly to Captain Cartwright at this moment. And it it looks, it's 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 possible, it could just be really windy, but it almost looks like he's trying to claw his way out of the airship to get away from the attacking pterodactyls. But you know, that could just be distance or mm. So yes, but, but the two he's, of them. he's landing on the dirigible, right? He's landing way out in the river. Oh, in the river. So he's away from the. Uh, yeah. Okay, so I can't really shout to him or anything. Uh, all right. So yeah, I make a note of that. But uh, uh, yeah, I'll just I'll just try and, and shoot the uh, the pterodactyl. Yeah, they're yeah. they're large enough that this would count as point blank range. So you get an extra die. Ooh. Excellent. All right. Oh, here we go with the pistol. Oh, that, this looks better. Three, four, five successes. Nice. On, on ten dice, that's the average. Excellent. Five successes. Okay. Now, coupled with the the injury that you've already inflicted, right? Uh, the the pterodactyl is already struggling with its cargo. Its rider is is bleeding a little bit. The the bird itself is, or the pterodactyl itself is bleeding, but this one goes right between the eyes. Yes. <laughs> May not be dead, but it's it's certainly out of the flight, right? So it suddenly you know flares its wings and its head comes down. The rider goes over the top, but the rider hits the 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 long bony sail like projection off the back of the of the creature's head and the two of them slam into the tail structure of the Aries and you know go clawing and and scrambling down the back of it the other rider is connected to them by the net he's got to let go or be pulled down with them and so he lets go and peels off and so the green object falls out of sight okay okay uh, Let's go back to the Epiphany while we deal with all that. So back at the Epiphany, Oscar is heading for the trees. Okay. Um, Can I jump into Burke for one second? Yeah. <laughs> so Burke tells Oscar, make for the river. Maybe we can make more speed there. Uh, uh, and try and avoid these dinosaurs. Yeah, that sounds That's good. And um, you know, I'll. Uh, I mean, I, I'm tr trying to picture how. You know, do we have to get through the the forest to get to the river? Or yeah, the the unfortunately they've got a minimum ceiling of five meters, and a maximum ceiling of five meters. Yeah, oh. so basically, we have to get through the, the trees. So, and they move faster than expected. Still, you know, you get to the river, then you can open up the throttle, right? So, <laughs> okay, I'll, I'll um, I'll head, I'll, I'll shout, I'll shout to um, to Garibaldi that we're heading for the river, and. Just in time to see Garibaldi lanced <laughs> by the sharp beak of the pterodactyl. Is he? Is he? In a dramatic spray of blood. <laughs> I'll shout to right Phil over top of the very brave and enchanting Phillips. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Phillips, you're heading to trouble. the river. <laughs> 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 Phillips, follow me, Phillips. <laughs> Uh, and uh, yeah, I'll um, I'll pile it through the trees. All right, <laughs> try. Difficulty three, sir. Okay. For this turn of action. Uh, oh, three. 
All right, marginal success, which means that there is some physical contact with old growth trees, right? However, it's not a failure, right? So you're making it through, but the, the battery juice is sloshing, the, the whole thing is vibrating, right? There's, there's one poor soldier who has escaped the clutches of arm rooster credenza who's like clinging on the outside of the, <laughs> of, the ship, <laughs> of the skiff. Hang on, chaps. Phillips in the other vessel. <laughs> Phillips in the other vessel. You know, the, the bird or the pterodactyl has lanced over top and then and then pulled back with its kind of barbed uh, stony beak. And, you, and you, know, you can hear fabric and flesh ripping uh, behind you as Garibaldi has been speared. Is, is there still a rider on that? There's still a rider. Yeah, yeah. so I want to shoot the rider. Because maybe if I shoot him, uh, the rider, then the noise might frighten the pterodactyl. With and without a rider, it, it might take off. It's a desperate gamble, but hey, sounds good. You can have another style point. Yes. So yeah, okay. Let's 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 use one of those style points. Uh, because the situation is quite dire, and so I think I'm going to interpose myself between Garibaldi and uh, the pterodactyl to to do this the shot. And it's a good shot. It's uh, six six uh, successes out of seven dice. Oh, that's a better nice. astronomical. Oh, and I'm not, I'm not, I'm not factoring in any. You need, you need to roll three more dice. Yeah, you Ooh, need to roll. Yeah, kill it. Good for it. And two more successes. So that's take it. eight. So what's a, eight, eight successes. successes? Yes. All right. So the rider who is like rearing up to throw his spear at one of you. Uh, just keeps rearing up and going over and off the side of, of the boat. Nice. Which is not being controlled, possibly, by anyone. Or is it? <laughs> dun, dun, dun. Oh. It's circling around. <laughs> Double your body. Oh, no. No, I'm afraid. I'm afraid. I'm afraid we're not, sir, because I have the Die Hard talent. That's uh, right, Die Hard. I had to read it again. And look look what's on the Die Hard talent page. There we go. That's ridiculous. Yeah, so yeah. How, how, how did Wiggy know? How did Wiggy know this is going to happen right here, just like this? But yes, in fact. I'm, I'm, writing, I'm writing this talent in case of pterodactyls. Writing the storm, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So Train of thought. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just totally on. Uh, uh, yeah. That's excellent. Die Hard pays for itself. Yes, it does. In the very first, very first use. Oh. All right. I'm not going to do that. Now, Oscar has abandoned you. He's ripping off through the trees. Okay. Maybe abandoned is too strong. I think that's, that's he's guiding that's you to the strong. river. Yeah. That's... So we've got <laughs> we've got yeah, showing him the way. <laughs> we've got pterodactyl still on this. Um, yes, you've got but, one pterodactyl but, still on. It hasn't had time to react to the loss doesn't, of its rider yet. Doesn't have, doesn't have a rider. Um, I think pretty much we've got Phillips with us, so we're good. But I can just I just try to follow Oscar as best I can. Okay, that's two dice, sir. There isn't much choice. We gotta go this way. And really? Am, I, am really? I getting style? Is, am I getting style for being? Yes, you can have uh, one style point for being a thrill seeker and having that cause problems. <laughs> oh no, 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 that's fine. Yeah. Okay. Alrighty. Oh, so I'm gonna try to follow. So I'm taking one di negative di one die penalty. So I've got two dice. Take away one. I'm gonna use all three style that I have right now because this is very important. It is very important. It is very important. So um, and it's the same difficulty. That's okay. You can't see the difficulty. It's difficulty three. Okay, what's well, very important? That's why I'm rolling all these, all these style dice. So uh, oh, that's what I'm doing. <laughs> oh yes, yes. Well, on my regular die, I rolled nothing, but on these <coughs> leagues of gothic horror style dice that I'm using, oh. <laughs> right. look at that. Yeah. Nicely done. So 
you are managing to strike most of the same old growth trees that Oscar did before you. <laughs> and try to knock the damn chicken off. <laughs> Right. If only. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now its claws are firmly rooted in the the wood of the skiff, you know, and you know it, its wings are are being buffeted by branches, and it, its its headpiece is shattering smaller branches overhead. So there's leaves and and everything spraying coconuts. Lord knows what startled snakes as you're ripping through faster than any galloping horse. You know these are are hugely electrifying vehicle. Speaking of hugely electrifying, there's electric discharge all <laughs> over the rear of the ship. You know, the, the, the skiff has its guidance, uh, its rudder, so to speak, is, is mostly metal. So it's sparking and, and spraying, uh, you know, green flame and electrical discharge everywhere as you're tearing through uh, the rainforest. Wow! Woo! Uh, a, a, a scream like that, that on of Slim Pickens on riding the atomic bomb is coming out of my throat. Yeah! Ah! <laughs> it's, it's, it's both terrifying and exhilarating all at once. That's right. And <laughs> one style point to you for the experience. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> the pterodactyl attacks Phillips. Requiring defense. Which I'm thinking is four again, right? Everything's four. That's correct. However, um, well, anyway, yes, you've got four. Have I, um, who, who's in my skiff? You have Ann Smith and Perry and... Uh, Burke, we said... Do Burke, you've got, you've got oh. Burke and Proctor and Gamble and, and a host I, of I soldiers. I have a feeling that Burke could be tapping my shoulder saying, if you... If you just ease back on on the speed there, Professor, I can take a shot at the uh, yeah. At the you would love to take a shot. Yeah. All right. So I'll do that. I'll just kind of ease back on the speed, try and let um, Garibaldi catch up. And okay. yeah, Burke will be on the back, trying to pick a target through the trees. Nice. So before we handle that shot, let's see if. Phillips dies. <laughs> Defensive three. Defensive three. Excellent. So he takes one lethal wound. Oh, yeah, this thing is bad average. <sighs> so tearing into, you know, into his flesh. Ouch. You get a real look at its eye. It gets nice and close. And you're lucky it didn't try to to bite with its you know its millions of of fangs or claw or you know use its talons, but uh, it's enraged. I bet. <laughs> okay, so that's uh, his turn to defend. It's now his turn to attack. So. Does Phillips have some sort of melee skill? Or? Sure, he does. Okay, yeah, he, can use, he can use the. So I think he's going to use the rifle exactly, right? And like sort of use it like a club and try to get because we're really point blank, right? He's on top of me. He's just attacked me. So I think I'm going to drive him off by slamming the the rifle into him. Right. So so it's a skill of four and skill of this, four and the the rifle will add two. Two. Excellent. Pick in his mouth that worked in a book I read as a lad. <laughs> I'm just trying. <laughs> uh, but unfortunately, I only get one success out of six dice. Right. So, <laughs> you know, you, you hear that, that thick thud of it doesn't really matter against this leathery hide. Now, Oscar, there you are in the back of the skiff. Right, you got the electrical discharge going on all around you and and behind you. As you try and slow things down, there's there's more available energy in the battery, so the discharge is getting bigger. Leaves are catching on fire as you're going, and Burke drops the big elephant gun and props it right on your shoulder. <laughs> nice. Don't 
move. Don't move. <laughs> <laughs> and from the front of the boat, from the front of the boat, you can hear Percy going, "Stay on target. Stay on target." <laughs> He's writing it down furiously as he goes. Oh my gosh! And As the trees rush past, <laughs> Oscar, why don't you handle handle Burke with his his ridiculous fifteen die, fifteen die? <laughs> yeah, don't hit Phillips with that, please, uh, yeah. or, or Garibaldi. So. <laughs> That's right. So you're firing past Garibaldi. I might have to break out with another pack of dice. Yeah. Oh my goodness gracious! Yeah, but but that you know that that whole propping the gun that's like worth one style. So it, yeah. uh, it's worth. <laughs> it's also worth you know one die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fifteen dice. This is ridiculous. Oh yeah, that's why I had to buy so many of these. <laughs> and they're only, you know, they're only one use dice. You have to keep I know, trying. I know. <laughs> <laughs> you got to throw those away and buy new ones. Yeah. yeah. So let's have a look. <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight successes. Oh! Boom. So it's been a while since anybody beat the average. So yeah, right on. <laughs> <laughs> Boom! So there's Phillips, right? Drives the butt of the rifle in, the, the pterodactyl rears up to do some woeful damage, and then its head explodes, <laughs> filling the boat with brains. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> but his body is still in the skiff. Right. So it's on top of Phillips. Phillips is on top of, of Garibaldi. Garibaldi's on top of the of the, the, the rudder discharges everywhere and you're rapidly catching up to oscar oh that's right that's right dodge garibaldi dodge okay i try, guess this is piloting try not to piloting. crash into me again <laughs> okay well this is this is good so i'm gonna try dodge flying with my one with my one die seeing as i have one die penalty so here's this other this other style die i've, I've, I've earned and i'm going to roll two dice trying to dodge out of the way of Garibaldi, which is probably some difficulty of three or something like that. <laughs> yeah. Nope. Just roll. <laughs> that was a one. All right. One success. All right. Okay. Now you have the choice of scraping by along the side where there is a soldier dangling mm -hmm. or dipping under. 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 Absolutely. I don't want to kill the guy. I'm like, oh dear. Fair enough. So now you've got the pterodactyl, <coughs> the soldier, Phillips, and yourself in the skiff. Oh, cool. Excellent. Yeah. <laughs> just trying to just distribute and, the weight a little better. There, Oscar. <laughs> so Phillips grabs the soldier. It's like, like, get down, <laughs> get down, hang on. <laughs> and you are booking it for the Amazon. All right now, it took. It took hours and hours and hours for Tanvir and George and Phillips and others to make their way all the way through all of this, this dense brush uh, to get to the Amazon. But at your height, you know, you've got wide branches, you've got vines and things like that, the occasional jungle cat. But it's, it's not too bad, right? And the, the, the skiffs are strong enough to shatter some of the smaller branches that, that get in your way. But clothes are being ripped and faces are being scratched. And there's the occasional dodge around some truly enormous tree. But in remarkably few minutes, you come out over top of the river, you know, and there's, there's rolling crocodiles or alligators, whichever it is, alligators in the Amazon, I think. And, uh, you know, they don't care, but you know you scatter all kinds of tropical birds, and and uh, um, Burke has snatched a python out of the tree as as you come out into open space. He says, "This will be good eats later." And uh, <laughs> now you have the choice of going upriver or down. Upriver is toward our destination. So, down is back to the shore. Right. Can I just ask, um, are we free of the pterodactyls? 
Yes, sir. I've got half of one. <laughs> maybe we should. Um, maybe we should find somewhere to to land and yeah, give uh, Garibaldi some medical attention and yeah, you know, re regroup and think about what the next step steps are. Garibaldi is in peril. He loses another wound. Oh. Because he has okay. not been stabilized. This is the, the part of the Amazon which is like a, a delta, isn't it? Because it's pretty much near well, the I, coast. I automatically stabilize too. You automatically stabilize. You don't ah. lose it. Woohoo! That's okay. Hey. That's okay. No, it's, it's, it's tough to remember all the little things that one does. Yes, excellent. Nice. No, I'm fine. I'm yeah, fine. Yeah, so there's, there's grassy banks and there's, you know, there's muddy, it's very flat, but there's lots and lots and lots of tributaries spread out all over. Uh, through this through this region but all the water is going in the same direction yeah okay well let's let's find a place to land and away from the crocodiles or the alligators <laughs> all right as you're looking for a place to to set down there is a tremendous audible but also you can feel it inside your bodies Right. First, your hair stands on end, like all the hair, and your eyeballs feel dry, and your, your, your tongue kind of expands a little bit, and your heart stops, and then there's this intense, immense detonation. Ooh. Do we see smoke? No smoke, but for a second, green light. Okay. Jeez. You see that, Phillips? Yeah. You see that, Come on, Oscar, we don't have time. That way. Whatever direction the green light was. <coughs> Come on, man. Okay. There's no time to stop now. Okay. You seem, you seem, yeah, okay. We probably need to go and help. This is great. Yeah. We should have built these things back in England. <laughs> Why didn't you build these things back in England? These are fantastic. <laughs> Surely you shouldn't be talking so much. <laughs> <laughs> Screaming at each other across the, the Okay, uh, so we power down and we skim round and we head towards the explosion. All right. Now it takes a little while, but uh, soon you see smoke. And then uh, you hear the sound of you know like crackling fires and you come around the corner of of the river up against the bank is the red four wing biplane and cowering or or maybe just crouching low for defensive purposes but probably cowering inside the passenger seat is uh, a very familiar looking <laughs> 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 lieutenant armbruster cadenza I no sign of the pilot sure. of that of the craft, and the dirigible, right? All you can really see of it are you know its its massive tail fins, with its its RGS logo and its its you know blazing with the name Aries and its code number. They're kind of up at an angle, but the entire dirigible um, is is grounded it's deflating there's flames all through the superstructure there are soldiers flat on their backs or, or collapsed in their stomachs as if they are sleeping they're they're breathing they don't seem to be injured but they are all out and atop the collapsing dirigible you see the familiar form of Tanvir Singh and George Mallory and other people wearing the same livery as the soldiers who attacked you uh, moments ago. How did Credenza get here this fast? He was just shooting at me back there. <laughs> <laughs> and so, uh, <laughs> and there are bodies of of blown apart pterodactyls and their riders everywhere so my thinking is that we grab our friends and we go you want to get mallory yeah 
All right. And Tanvir. Yeah. Grab all right. Them. Grab them and go. Because after all, this is this is a race. And we've, How much? We got the slight upper hand, I think, at this point. Sure. Yeah, yeah. Distract them. I'll distract them. You get them. You get you get you get Tanvir and Mallory. I'll distract everybody else. I think I'm getting the hang of this. Okay. Can I have a resilience check from George Mallory, please, to see if he can rouse himself. Oh, here it is. It's like, where is my sheet? Uh, resilience is double your body. Here we go. That is a three, out of four dice. It's pretty good. All right. Nice. So Mallory's coming around. Tanvir can give it a try. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just go four dice for Tanvir. Are there any other other people on the um, on the deck actually conscious or no? Uh, Rochefort is is showing signs of consciousness. He's uh, deduce. Oh no, he's got three. I'm sorry. Okay, that's pretty good. So and I you hear you hear this buzzing sound. It's it's kind of like the epiphany, but smaller. Uh. I don't like the epiphany, but it's more. Uh, the I, I, sound of the epiphany. Uh, oh, okay. Okay. So do I spot the skiffs uh, coming around? You can hear them anyway. Okay. Okay. So I figure, you know, uh, I, I get up, I, I, <coughs> I kick uh, uh, Rochefort's gun away from him so he doesn't reach it quite as far. And I say to him, uh, our word is kept. Uh, we defended the ship. Um, tell Cartwright, uh, you know, maybe this will convince Cartwright that uh, uh, what I say is real. Um, there is a large uh, dinosaur out there, and uh, this expedition was doomed from the start. Um, uh, There's one thing I feel honor bound to tell you, Mallory. What is that? This expedition isn't an expedition. This expedition is simply to deliver cargo and pick up the silver. We've been traveling to the plateau for years. For years? What so has happened here today is something we have never seen. You haven't seen the dinosaurs before? Oh, well, we've seen dinosaurs like this before but not not bombs not green lights well we may have you you may have roused the anger of the reptile people then uh, how do we know it wasn't you we don't but we only, they attacked us as soon as we arrived. So they knew someone was coming. I fear, I fear perhaps delving into the mines has uh, roused their anger. Ah. Uh, uh, I know you're anxious to join your friends, but one last piece. The mines are their bribe to us. Their bribe, so we, we wouldn't get the silver, and we leave them alone. See, once we were like you, Mallory, we wanted to bring the dinosaurs back to London. As much as everybody hates Challenger, it would have been nice to see the look on his face if he had been right. Well then. It certainly changes things. Uh. I'm honor bound to stay here, Mallory, and someone has to do something about this. And he holds out his hand. I'll, I'll grab him and help him to his feet. Uh, I'll say, this certainly changes our situation. I'll have a word with my expedition. Uh, 
there is hmm. uh, let, let's see to the wounded then first uh, you're a good man Mallory and uh so it's, uh, Danvir can give you a hand uh, with the, uh, while I go talk to, uh, talk to our people. Maybe we can get uh, them, uh, maybe we can get some medical help from them as well. All right. So let's bring <clears throat> everybody together, right? The, the skiffs uh, get sorted. Mallory is talking to uh, one of the officers from the Aries as you get into earshot. Gotcha. Okay. So, and the, the green thing is gone, right? Yeah. Okay, okay. Just double, double checking. Yeah, there's there's a, a flash huge of light. Huge hole behind right. where the, uh, you know, where the Aries has settled. Uh, I mean, Tamir's thing is telling, you know, so you've been a gracious host. And yes, I believe you're right. He is exasperated. It could very well have been us. That's <laughs> <laughs> put on the ire. Yeah. Green side. This is, this is, Amazing, Mal Mallory, you're all right. Look at all this. What's happened? Yes. What's happened? Uh, uh, well, I take it you saw the, the flash of light. That's the last I remember. And the, the ship collapsed to the ground. We're lucky to be alive. Uh, yes, sir. Some sort of weapon uh, wielded by the, uh, uh, by the uh, reptile people. Some sort of bomb, it seems. Uh, now, down, down below... Uh, crewmen are, are waking up, and you know they can see something from you know underneath the dirigible that you can't from from up above, and they begin rescue operations to get uh, people out of the gondola. Mm. Okay. So, uh, situation has changed. Uh, I think we should stop and help. Uh, uh, <laughs> Uh, that's the understatement the situation has changed, old yeah. boy. The situation has changed. Oh, God bless you, Mallory. I missed you. And uh, <laughs> nice go help them with the, go help them with these wounded people, and see if you can scrounge up some tea somewhere. I haven't had a decent <laughs> cup of Earl Grey in days. <laughs> now Garibaldi is grievously wounded. Oh, yes, yes. So I that's true. I, I mean, I, 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 yeah. Um, well, I could uh, practice. Yeah. My yeah. medicine on him again. Oh, good God. Yes. Well, I, I have I have medicine as well, so I can... Help him. Assist. Help him. <laughs> well, you're standing and walking, right? It's like, I know. oh my you God. Guys, you guys got to get a... I literally gotta feel like... Uh, I, 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 I forgot. I forgot how wounded you were. <laughs> I'm, I'm delirious <laughs> with excitement. No, it's okay. It's great. It's like, I'm just talking. You have, to, you have to like actually get me to sit down. I feel like we're going to be adding stitches upon stitches here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you see this? Look at this. It's a roadmap of pain. <laughs> oh, God. It's going to be a heck of a scar there. Hey, it's not well, we, and we got to work on Phillips as well. So I, yeah. I got a four medicine <laughs> skill. So I don't know if we can. Yeah. How, how much do you have? Uh, I have a, f a four as well. Okay. So we can. Oh, I can assist with two dice. Oh, it's just, just not, no more of that carbolic acid, please. <laughs> Yes, effect. to the carbolic acid. Oh, 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 <laughs> right. give me so, so time passes, right? Fires get, get doused. The, the Aries gets safely collapsed. The, the crew are roused. The triage center is, is set up. Um, they're having difficulty uh, waking Captain Cartwright. He's a, a much older gentleman, of course, was in the command center what, at the bottom of the dirigible when it crashed into the earth and smoke inhalation and, and all of this stuff. So Rochefort is in temporary command, right? So we got tents set up and let's commence with the healing. Let the oh healing begin. So Robin, you want to do the first roll for yeah. you? You do Garibaldi, I'll try for Phillips with your assistance, right? So we can speed up on the rolling. Okay, here we go then. Uh, two successes. Six dice? I've only got four dice. Oh, no, you can so you're rolling two more dice, dice because, because of my help. Uh, ah, sorry. Okay. Yeah, so, you know, it's three successes. <laughs> okay. Mm. All right. So that's one, one lethal 
wound is converted, converted to non lethal. I, I, I am so sorry. Perhaps I should have tried healing Garibaldi because uh, uh, Phillips gets three, five successes on <laughs> <laughs> a lot of six so fights. Phillips <laughs> discovers it was it it was a very painful wound, but was actually just in a painful spot. There's, there's not life threatening <laughs> at all. <laughs> I think I think also, you know, uh, Weingold tends to practice his medicine much like his engineering. So it's Oh, that's it's, that's probably it's, it. It's very rudimentary. <laughs> Copper tubing welding. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So once those who are injured have been have been treated and supplies have been, you know, sorted out. Uh, then this kind of awkward situation begins. It, it's Rochefort seems to feel like he's going to stay here and determine what to do with uh, those crew people who are severely injured, you know, dead and dying types. And he seems to be expecting you to continue on with the journey. But there's also this, you know, this look in his eye that he, you know, he's been there before. He wants to go, you know, uh, what's be the involved status, in solving the problem. What's the status on Cartwright? Is he like, out? Is he unconscious? Is he right, hasn't regained consciousness. Uh, mm -hmm. He and the, the bridge crew uh, suffered a lot of smoke inhalation and, and some degree of, of burning there. In, in the, they, have a, they have a medical doctor uh, who was only slightly injured uh, in the detonation who's taking care of them. But he's, you know, as old as Cartwright. It's like they've been adventuring together forever, you know, so like, you know, Cartwright's you know, in his 70s and the doctor's similar. So. Okay. So, you know, uh, I grab a bottle of something that has miraculously survived the crash of the ship. <laughs> and I go over to... It's, it's an incredibly expensive bottle of champagne. Yeah. So I, I pop it open and I, I sit next to Rochefort and I hand him... You know, I take a swig and I hand him the bottle and I say, You have good taste, Mallory. Uh, well, it's, uh, it's clearly a moment to celebrate that we are alive. Uh, so, uh, you know, I think it's time we reassessed uh, what we're doing here. Um, these mines. These people are riled up. They offered you the mines as a bribe to not go to them. Uh, okay. When contact was first made, there was, there was no sign of the, of the dinosaurs or anything like that. So yet another culture we hadn't met before. There's nothing new for the Royal Geographic Society, and we wanted to implement diplomatic relations, but they were distinctly uninterested. And much to our surprise, considering their lifestyle, they were treating us like an, a less educated culture. They were able to, they were able to point out uh, social problems and, and technological problems uh, that we were having, and they kept recommending that we abandon them. Finally, politicians being politicians, Mallory, it wound up being a tribute situation. We would supply them with certain things that they needed to foray out of their area to obtain, and they would supply us with remarkably pure silver. And so you have an outpost there. Is it is it a lot of people? Is it a handful? What? How it's, big is the settlement? <laughs> it is, of course, uh, just a few men. Much fewer than usual, 
because that first expedition, of course, was part of the garrison. Mm. We created their their quest as a cover story. I see. Well, uh, it seems to me that perhaps some new faction among the reptile people has arisen to take control, right? These are don't seem to behave as you described as your initial contact. And so it makes me wonder, this is no longer an expedition of discovery, but this is perhaps a rescue mission now. If, these, if these dinosaurs have, have flown all the way out here to attack us, what have they done with the mines that are right next to them? I mean, I mean, are our compatriots in chains? Are they dead? Have they been sacrificed um, in some sort of, I don't know, retribution uh, for what he they takes see? He takes a swig, you know, as a, our thoughts are aligned on this, Mallory. Another, other contact must be made to I think restore... So to restore peaceful relations between our peoples. I, th I, I would think this is the way to proceed and uh, to see if there's any of our people we can bring back. I mean, are we in agreement, gentlemen? I, I'm i guessing by now Oscar and, and, and Garibaldi have shown up. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, so first, I'm just taking it back. What are you, a rescue mission? Wait. Huh. Percy, what do you think? That does sound kind of, yeah, rescue mission. Uh, yes, the rescue mission. Rescue mission and bringing the discovery of the dinosaurs to the world, to light. Mm. I think, I, yeah, I think we could do this. We are members of the Empire. British, stiff upper lip. I think we do that. We just, our fellows are in danger. No, of course they're, Oscar, Don't what do you think? This is all. Because we, we obviously uh, haven't been party to a lot of this and we're just ca catching up. So, yeah, I mean, it's all very fascinating. And I think we need to do our duty. But listen, we have to uh, kind of pull the pull the two and we have to bring back dinosaurs. We have to, we have to vindicate our... our, our uh, the benefactors, I, we can't just leave them. We got we got a duty to them as well. And when Rochefort gets to his feet, you know, wipes the top of the bottle, passes it over to Oscar, introduces himself, says, "I am Armand Rochefort of the Royal Geographic Society, sir." And. My great concern about your expedition has, in a sense, always resided with you. You know, and his, his one eye is uh, penetrating. Uh, why would that be, sir? As I was mentioning to Mallory here, the natives of the plateau have very strong negative reactions to our technology, particularly the advanced technology which you um, uh, are becoming known for. He's obviously fumbling for a polite way to... <laughs> <laughs> that you've dabbled with. <laughs> yes. And one of the many reasons why the society at the level at which Captain Cartwright operates was so opposed to the involvement of Dr. Neslinger is that in the Empire there may not be more advanced technology of that type. Starting to fall into place. Mm. Okay. 
Now, honestly, gentlemen, I suggested that you simply be told, but I was overruled. And now I am left to pick up the pieces. That's all very well and good, but at the end of the day, this is still, still about the 30 pieces of silver. Come on. It's always about 30 pieces of silver. No, it's not. We're here for discovery. And now we're here for a rescue, not for filthy money. Right, Burke? <laughs> Burke well, says, you know, I came to shoot things. Exactly. It's not about the money. And I'm now I'm kind of go, going up right up to right up to uh, Rosford and like kind of pointing, you know, on his chest. It's like, this is not about money. It was about money for you, but you can't just say this is about the, you know, some kind of uh, cultural. And I'm fumbling for the words, you know, cult, you know, cultural, you know, uh, trying to trying to have you know smooth things over culturally, just because of the, you just you want the money, you want the silver. This isn't about any kind of you know, respect for the other culture's beliefs. This is all nonsense. Now I understand why your father has you live in that empty house in London while he resides in one of the most beautiful estates in the empire. Yes, a beautiful estate, but without a soul, without a heart. And who will read about my father when he's gone? No one. They'll read about me. Oh. I imagine the <laughs> king will read his obituary. <laughs> Gentlemen, let's not lose sight of our goal here. Uh, we do have a duty to king and country and to our fellow, and to our fellow men. Uh, uh, do you mean queen and country? Uh, queen is country, it Queen? Yes. I slipped up with uh, King. Yeah, it's, it's Queen. queen. Yeah, okay. yeah, Victorian. Victorian. Uh, that's right. Yeah, I, I thought <laughs> we were Edwardian for a minute. I just got sidetracked. Yeah, it's a, I've been spending too much time in it. Yeah, it's. A, <laughs> well, as far as I'm aware, it's still Queen and Country, sir. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Whatever. <laughs> yes. All right. So there's a moment of like agree to disagree. You know, the bottle is left. Rochefort has to go off and do things okay. with with the staff. Um, and, you know, they're they're building tents. They're making camp. They're organizing uh, survivors, and they're preparing for another attack. Hmm. Well, gentlemen, it seems we have to make a decision here now. Uh, I believe our course of action is clear. We should proceed with the expedition uh, and attempt to discover what has befallen the people in the camp, in the mines. Um, the, we've seen some of these reptile men make overtures to communicate with us, uh, even though we haven't succeeded. Uh, there must be some way in which we can calm the situation down. I mean, they are sending troops uh, constantly. Uh, how long until they attack Belém itself, right? They're, they're attacking our ships. But what about our settlements here uh, uh, in Brazil? I mean, will they go for the, for the settlements next? I don't know. I don't know. Is anybody? I mean, dude, we written their language or whatever they wrote down. I mean, Tanvir can probably you, you know something about all that stuff, don't you, Tanvir? Oh, <coughs> he's got some. He's the only guy with yeah, kind of, he's got skill. He's got, he's got skill in, uh, in the they, they, they they get, He's not going to shoot anything. Maybe we can have him work on trying to trying to establish communication. Well, that's certainly a very important goal. If you can manage uh, to communicate at least in written form. Then we can, you know, sit sit down and 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 parley with these people. Does Rochefort know anything about communicating with them? I have faith. I faith in them. Uh, they they must have communicated. They had a treaty. So somebody knows the language. Yeah, on the That's question, right. one way or the other. Right? On That's the right. question of whether or not to reveal the existence of these dinosaurs to the world at large, I think, I think that becomes secondary to 
to just dealing with the situation. I mean, there's there's lives at risk. Uh, I mean, are we so petty uh, and concerned with fame and fortune that uh, uh, our our duty as Englishmen is falls by the wayside? <laughs> I can see that. <laughs> yes, we are. <laughs> now, we, there's sorry, we there's some both. there's some sound coming from the sentries, right? Mm. You know, there's movement in the trees, and and uh, you know they, they send out a, a small you know pair of of, uh, of scouts to see what it is, but they quickly relax because broken umbrella in hand, leading a string of survivors of the Epiphany, is Grover. Nice, <laughs> excellent. Oh, Grover is. What remains of his of his cravat, you know, is is he's as neat as he can be, considering, right? And they've been marching for hours through the okay. through the jungle uh, with the few soldiers that were left behind, and, and uh, there's holes in his livery, and <laughs> yes, but he's he's so dignified that you almost can't see. Him. I think that's right. Yeah. Well, please tell me, Jean Claude is with him. Yeah, Jean Claude is still in. It was still in Bailey. All this, right? Oh well, at least we won't have we won't have anything really decent to eat. That's okay. Any time. Grover, old boy, I was looking for you before. Good to see you. Smashing, smashing. <laughs> You're looking splendid. Well, sir, what's happened to you? Looks like uh, looks like you have another wound. Yes, it's it's nothing. It'll it's it's but a scratch. Come along, Grover. It's great to see you. We have quite an adventure ahead of us. We're going to be rescuers. Really, sir? Do we have to? Oh, absolutely. And you are an essential uh, part. I, I, I do have to say that Lawrence Garibaldi looks terrible. He suffered, you know, blood loss. He has tremendous pain and moments of, of faintness. Which he's just trying to, to ride over, but you know, he oh. has been he has been sorely abused. And not in a good way. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we, we should um take a we'll uh get to this in the morning, fellas. I think I think maybe we should retire for the evening and and I mean, everybody is exhausted. Uh, run, even running the skiffs is in incredibly stressful, uh, oh, balancing no the energy flows and, and everything. So, um, you know, and this is a this is a relatively safe place. There's enough soldiers that you brought with you and that are here as survivors from from the dirigible. Uh, a relatively secure position can be set up, and people can have enough rest while under protection. There is a trained medical professional with medical equipment in a in a, uh, a triage center. It's not a hospital, but it's it's better than you know care uh, given in the in the field. Um, so enough damage was done to the skiffs that they may need tending to. Plus, a lot of skiffs were left behind. So does that mean we can we can get some more skiffs back? We have more hover skiffs, or just two? Yeah, they they you took two, right? Uh, but more had to be made because remember one of their one of their negative sides was that they couldn't take as many people. Mm, mm, okay. So so more were were set up. Okay. So it's possible if if you wanted to go back to the to the crash site to to get that that could be a goal. It may not be necessary. You certainly have you certainly have enough to take all of your people in the in the skiffs you have. Perhaps uh, so it's, it's not it's not needed. Perhaps we um, if we if we go as a smaller number, then perhaps we might go a little more unnoticed. As long as we have enough room to bring back any survivors, well, that's any, true. Any prisoners, prisoners that we might rescue. According to Rochefort, there might only be two or three left. Exactly a handful. So, yeah. 
as long as we have some room where we can take him back. That sounds like a good plan, right? How far do we have to travel to get to the outpost? Well, can I estimate that? Because I did see the map. And, yeah, yeah. yeah, you can be pretty confident that I mean, you don't have an idea yet about how fast the skiffs go. But ground travel, if you were to walk there, you could make it in three days. Mm. Skiff. So from, which, from which Oscar is able to calculate that you could do it in a day. But that would be leaving at dawn and arriving at sunset. I say, let's, let's, let's take a day to, to really get these craft back in, in tip-top shape. Maybe I can, uh, Oscar, maybe I can find some, uh, some better, maybe some sturdier containers for some of this. Uh, that's, a, that's, a good, uh, that's a good idea because they, they won't be able to mount two attacks in such close, you know. Well, if you, right? if you, uh, yeah, I mean, if you think you can find some, some ways to, to strengthen these glass vials, then, you know, good luck to you, sir, because we're in the middle of the jungle. <laughs> well, I'll just say what they've got over here on the, on the areas, and then uh, you can find one, wasn't at least one of your other men uh, good at piloting these? I mean, I, it's, a, it's a blast to fly. I really enjoy it. Old boy, but um, I'm a bit, um, but you know, a bit of a cuss. If we do incident. employ somebody that doesn't crash into my ship, then that would be useful. Well, exactly, exactly, because that will give me exactly. I know. I'm glad you understand. I'm <laughs> whacking, whacking him on the, whacking on the shoulder. Exactly, old boy. Exactly. I'm sorry, old chap. It's been a long day. I'm rather tired. <laughs> Uh, now, that's all right. no, that's now, now you're pointing out all the all the problems in my engineering. It's it's very difficult. The Rochefort wanders by and hands over another, you know, ridiculously priced bottle of, of champagne. It's terrible what gets destroyed in, in the crash, but I find a fine champagne lubricates all Fantastic. deception. Fantastic. And I, I pick it up, I'm like, look at the bottle. And this bottle created to withstand great pressure. And my eyes like light up. Yeah. Like, we have, how much more of this do we have? <laughs> well, Captain Cartwright is not one to let a good breakfast, lunch, or dinner go by without champagne. I think I found. I think I found my answer there, old boy. We need to get drinking. <laughs> well, that's something. We need I some empty get. bottles. We need some empty bottles, and there's only one way to do it. <laughs> and with so. no glass at this point, I'm just celebratory, celebratory drinking of the champagne from the bottle. Okay. As the sun sets this is over the Amazon, <laughs> two things happen. One, in his home in Belim, Sinjin Smythe at his desk writing his journal pauses a moment, puts the tip of the pen in his lip, and he says, those beautiful bastards. <laughs> but as the camp settles drunkenly down to sleep, drifting overhead through the sky, wrapped in crackling green energy, like a ghost ship, hold, crushed, twisted, drifts the epiphany. Oh my god. And scene. Yeah. <laughs> Whoa. Wow. They stole, they stole our ship. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> and all of a sudden Is we that a surprise? and all of a sudden we have our episode title. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> You crazy, beautiful bastards. That was beautiful. That's <laughs> right. Session 10. Those beautiful bastards. Yeah. Anyhow, yeah. <laughs> that might not meet the censorship requirements of a 1930s news. Yeah, movie. that's true. <laughs> awesome. All right. Very cool. Very One experience point for participating. Uh, hey. Peril. Oh, 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 so much peril. So much peril. Okay. One point for peril. If, I mean, if you insist, I wasn't really <laughs> sure. It was hard for me to tell where I was sitting if there was any peril. But... 
I, I, I just can't believe I did not destroy both ships by smashing into his. It was just, I mean, <laughs> the, the chances of me having to roll well on that was, was ridiculously low. Well. Yeah. Wisdom. Yes. We've learned a lot. We learned a lot today. Yeah. So what, uh, tell it back to me, what is the context of, of the expedition then? And what is your new goal or do you have a new goal? So I think with what we learned is that they've known about these people for quite a while. They were offered to mines and so there was some sort of tenuous peace established and uh, they were upset with the technology and at some point something changed and now they're bringing dinosaurs which they hadn't before and have begun attacking us right so they were expecting and some sort of airship like the uh, the aries right and so they probably we got there first so we were their first target um, but I, it wasn't really directed against us. I mean, I guess we extra made them mad because our ship is more technological than the others. But if they've made it this far, you know, to attack, they must have run over the mines by now. So uh, I think at this point what uh, uh, George is thinking about is... We need to rescue any survivors that there might be there. We need to see if we can smooth things over with the uh, locals, right? Even if it means abandoning the mines or something um, so that they don't attack Belen, right? Because they can, right? If they made it as far as the airship, they can make it as far as Belen. So now I'm thinking that this is like a rescue mission and a diplomatic mission to see if we can cool things down because otherwise... Uh, it's it's war, really. Right. Just feel like okay. oh. any other thoughts? Yes, definitely definitely a new influence involved with them, some kind of something that wasn't there before. Maybe an outside influence. And uh, let's see, but also I've I've learned that you know my the rose colored glasses have cracked. The National Geographic Society is not a society of pure exploration. It's, there's, there's corruption involved, and this really, really great zombie in a, in a major way. All right. You know, this, yeah. is, this, is, this is there's a purity of exploration. Just something about um, what Rochefort said about they've not seen this level of the, the green stuff, the, the green technology. stuff, the technology that they're using. I'm just wondering whether why they've stolen our ship, whether they are learning fast how to to use the technology and benefit from those those sort of developments hmm. there's more to it there's more to, there's it. More to it obviously maybe they they can make use of our ship in some way that scares it's me. like an onion wrapped. somebody can make use of our ship yeah. in an yeah. onion an onion wrapped in an onion <laughs> <laughs> right. That's Inside right. a rutabaga. Yeah. That's oh, so you guys have 1.4 wisdom for putting the pieces together. Excellent. Excellent. So that's yeah. three experience points. Now, in terms of success. Successfully didn't die. We didn't exactly create a, create, uh, get, uh, complete any kind of mission, except not dying. <laughs> We did. <laughs> it was it was a lot of reaction. It was a lot of reaction. Right. So maybe not this time. Maybe next time when you formulate a plan and begin to enact it. Right. So that's three experience points for this session. Wait a minute. Our role play was exemplary. Oh, that's right. I wanted to to bypass that one. Yes, of course. Always good role play. All right. All right. Phenomenal. So that's four four experience points. Very okay, nice. This session. Gonna have to spend some. Got eleven in the bank right now. Ooh. So fourteen, which I, I think. Ooh, just wait one more session, man. Come on. No, man. I think Percy needs to be more of a more of a oh a stronger yeah. five. I need to get Percy as a you know real. You want to raise Percy because there's other things to consider, right? There are roles that I, I call for a lot. Things like yeah. athletics, 
oh, uh, that are abysmal. Not in my case. In the group. Pilot on yeah. the ship? <laughs> Pilot on yeah, the ship might be handy. Yeah. Uh, so the, there are things, I mean, the big ticket items are are the really cool ones, but there are some, so, there are some things to, to consider. I've managed to squirrel away 26 XP. Oh, oh Lord, man. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to uh, thumb through the book this evening. Let me think about my character. Wiggy, call him. Tell him what to do, for God's sake. I'm not supposed to hold on to him. You're supposed to spend them. Uh, yeah, I will. I'll, uh, I'll say, you know, what should I do? What should I do? Direction sense, time sense. <laughs> <laughs> so we, we said we're taking a day of rest, right? So I got three non-lethals. Okay, I can take one of those off. Okay, cool. Yep. So I'm gonna do that now, so we don't. Uh, I've got with medical attention, medical attention. You could, you Ooh. could heal more. So I actually have if you're four, to four non-lethals sure. as well. So I, it would be a, it would probably be a good idea to. All right. So follow the doctor's orders for a day. So. And if you did, if you took the whole day and rested while the, the rank and file packed and painted and repaired, uh, then the non-lethal between you two would be gone. Sounds good to me. Should we do that? So what are we doubling the healing rate? Is that the idea? Yeah. Excellent. What about uh, Mr. Pincushion? Uh, hey. well, Mr. Pincushion has lethal wounds. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. and, uh, yeah. It's okay. I'll, 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 he doesn't do things by half. Yeah. No, I don't. I don't. <laughs> I, li I like to say I've spent m the majority once we've gotten to the Amazon injured within like a, you know like I mean just teeter tottering between you know negatives and, and zero and I think I had one a couple times. Might have a two elf. You know, it's not I, the years; it's the mileage. Yeah, yeah. Listen, yeah. I think it, all of us picked Die Hard because we had a feeling that this might happen. Because <laughs> I have Die Hard too. So <laughs> like, uh, I do not. So oh, okay. I, so. I discovered. What, what is George? What has Oscar been hurt? Yeah, I had some non-lethal. Oscar's been abused a lot, yeah, like in small amounts, in every encounter. I think. Right. I, I haven't to this to this day haven't taken a lethal. But then you know, I my motivation. Current injuries are from fatigue. Yeah, you, you ask about you know, uh, you said about uh, Oscar abandoning uh, uh, Garibaldi. Well, you know, my motivation is escape. So, <laughs> why did you get? Why did you get? Listen, when the ship when the ship like was shaking, you had a spanner fall on your head. That was your freaking injury. <laughs> well, you know, but he worked himself practically into the hospital. He, he exhausted himself for the good of the crew. I did. I mean, there was that moment when the ship was upside down, and I was moving across the deck. There was that one roll that. which could have gone badly. So, yeah. you know. Uh, he's just got lucky. So that's the difference between you and me, and Oscar. Your roles could have gone badly. <laughs> Mine did. <laughs> the, the only time I get bad, the only time I get bad roles is when I'm trying to heal you. That's I know. That's, that's when it goes badly wrong. Because there's, there's some interesting, you know, like psychic residue going on <laughs> there. I don't know, just picking up spanners rather than scalpels. Yeah, I don't know. Just doesn't seem to uh, <laughs> doesn't seem to work when it comes to That's healing. That's fantastic. We'll be fine. All right. Well, this well, is great. For our viewing audience, please remember, uh, and if you've tuned in late, go back to the beginning because there's an exciting contest with the opportunity to win a valuable prize. What is the contest? What we're looking for is for you to communicate through cust serve. That's one word at triplacegames.com. The answer to this question In what source book does Dr. Challenger appear? First, Don't post it yeah. in the comments. Don't post anything, personal information publicly communicate directly with the customer service email link from Triple A's Games. You'll find it in the description on this video. And uh, may the best response win. <clears throat> Just to say, we will give 
uh, you a free PDF of anything from our back catalogue that you desire. Uh, so yeah, let us know. Unfortunately, none of the people arranged here uh, <laughs> can can benefit from that, uh, and that's okay because I have the back catalog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know about you or you, but I do. <laughs> I have I have it all as well, just to say, that I would say. <laughs> cool. Uh, so I think we'll wrap it up there, folks. Thank you very much to uh, all uh, of you watching, and um, we hope to be back in two weeks' time. I think two weeks. Two weeks. Time. Next time with what? The sky. Yes. Oh yes. No. 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 Limit. Yes. Bad yes. The best ever. We never <laughs> get it right. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's, <laughs> let's, <laughs> let's, yeah. let's try that again. Okay. So Thank you. we'll be back in two weeks' time to play. The, the sky, sky is, is no, no limit. limit.